Hello everyone and welcome to another trick video. So today we're going to be taking a look at Orzhop tokens in historic, well technically Orzhop tokens but at the same time not. Just because we are playing with this new card from the Wilds of Eldrain called a Poland Shield Hair in this deck. So this is the other token lord in this deck other than Intangible Virtue. We have replaced the Flowering of the White Trees entirely just because that card was a legendary card so you can't have multiple cards at the same time but this is not so automatically this is gonna be an upgrade and other than that we have also replaced the wedding announcements for bitter blossom this is a two minute card the other card is a three minute card so bitter blossom is going to be a huge upgrade for the stack that spawns a token every single turn and because now that we have gotten rid of the wedding announcements we can also incorporate loris into this deck as well so yeah i mean the deck should be pretty good so we're gonna be trying this deck out in historic best of three to show you guys how the deck does so let's hop on over yeah that's a uh, pretty nice hand potentially humans Um, we'll just pass. Pretty obvious that they probably know we have Orcish Bowl Master. So it's a human deck. Ooh, that is that was actually perfect. The land was actually perfect. Again, Bitter Blossom feeling a bit slow in this deck. But I'm still gonna play it because I don't think they're gonna attack here. Like the giant killer. Okay, so they they get to attack here. Yeah, bitter blossom feeling a bit slow. So because we have Bitter Blossom... I want to block with the... Token... Or should I block with this? I think I should block with that. This is not looking good, I will say. They're gonna draw a lot of cards. This is an interesting attack. I don't... Hmm... This is only really bad if there's an Aganjo here. But if there's no Aganjo... Like I would do something like this.
Please no Ganjo. One time. Wow. That's crazy. Huh. Okay. Maybe there's hope. That was like our only way out. If like them not having um a ganjo there. It was so vital for them to not have a ganjo. So that worked out really well. Um did we win? Let me see. 8 10 1 2 3 Yeah, I think we won. Hmm. Fatal push in. I don't think the end is particularly good as a form and a removal spell against an aggro deck. Like, I just don't think so. Retrofitter is a bit slow, so we'll cut Retrofitters. That was actually a very important win. Going second like that. That actually sucks quite a lot, doesn't it? Wow, that actually sucks. So we're gonna pass here. I am going to take this damage. Because they could have another Thalia, right? I'm gonna start the Bitter Blossom. Okay, so that was enough to win the game. Unfortunately, I think this is a mulligan. It worked out. Actually worked out perfectly. Wow. Like, look at this hand. Besage me. Okay. So what am I playing against? Uh, Yagamoth, maybe? I've seen some lists playing Bitter Blossom and Yagamoth, but... I don't know. I don't think it's that good. I don't think it's that good. Orcish Bowmaster off the top? Nope. No Orcish Bowmaster off the top. No Orkish Bowmaster off the top. We need an intangible virtue next turn. So that we can attack and have a pile on up. 
Otherwise, we're gonna have a tough time. Seems like they're looking to play Besieged, maybe? Hmm. Another Bitter Blossom. That is not good, actually. Just going to kill this out now. They're taking a lot of damage. Wow. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? That is actually kind of crazy that what they did there. They must have another one ring if they're doing that. Okay, this is actually a good play, what they did there. But this way, my Orcish Bowmaster gets another ping before the Orcish Bowmaster dies, which is nice. I think they're dead. Yeah, it seems like they're dead. Yeah, like I said... Okay. Uh, Yagamoth decks... They're just taking too much damage from Yagamoth ping, Bitter Blossom ping, One Ring ping, like... That's only good if you have assembled a combo, but... The thing is, if you assemble the combo, you already won anyways. I feel like it's just a... Bitter Blossom is a bit of a... Win more card in that deck. I'm not liking the shield hair in this matchup just because it dies to creature removal spells. Bitter Blossom seems good. Just not sure about everything else. I think I'm just going to cut the dawn. Um... Something like this. Like, I know what they're going for with Besiege. A sacrifice of Bitter Blossom and whatnot. But, yeah, you're just taking too much damage, aren't you? Just a tiny bit. I'm doing this now because I have nothing to do. Otherwise, just saving the Pithing Needle there for later use is probably nice too.
So we have the end. If they play Yagmoth... Oh, they're playing one ring. Okay, I see. Uh, Flash and Orcish Bowmaster here. They have their own Orcish Bowmaster. Feels kind of bad. Now, do we care about their Orcish Bowmaster? Probably not, right? We don't draw a single card. Yeah, we don't draw a single card. And since we have... Bitter Blossom, we should probably care about our life total a little bit. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. We'll see here. Okay, so they, they're forced to get rid of the Pithing Needle because obviously it looks like they have Yagamoth in their hand. So they're gonna bring in Yagamoth. But if they do that, they're probably gonna lose. Okay. So now they draw one less card. And we also have a pile on. So I don't know how they can win from this position. I just don't. They just have to stall with the one ring. But what else is there to do? They're just taking so much damage. They even have this, nurturing peatland. And they're about to take damage from Bitter Blossom as well. It 
the way it's tapping. I'm tapping all my black mana, like, what the heck? Um, sure. They take two, three damage. They take three damage here. So if I pile on... Actually, I can't pile on because they're going to just uh, gain three life from that. So we got to take it a little bit slower. I'm pinging face because I'm not drawing any cars right now. It's a matter of time, right? It's a matter of time. They have to sacrifice the one ring here. What? Um, so currently they can make food and then gain life. So, okay, they're just gone. Yeah, I mean, the end is pretty brutal against them, isn't it? Like, this cart? <laughs> Every time I play this cart, I am impressed. I am... Very impressed. Sure. Play the temple garden first. Um, I'm gonna try to bait out an Orcish Bowmaster because if I or hold up Orcish Bowmaster, they're playing black. They're gonna hold up their Orcish Bowmaster, so I think it's just better to play out the Shadow Summoning here. And this way now we have Orcish Bowmaster plus Lingering Soul or Orcish Bowmaster plus uh, Shield Hair, Poland Shield Hair. Imagine if they sacrifice this just to kill a 1-1. <laughs> 
That would be embarrassing. Um, I mean, they're holding up a lot of cards. I don't want to tap out. Just going to attack here. Big sad for our opponent there. Double big sad. Having to use Heartless Act and Fatal Push on the one ones. I'm stopping the bleeding a little bit. Because I, I don't want to just die to shoulder later. And this might kind of force out like some removal spells. So what did they do? Did they get the ring? Or the shoulder? Because ring here isn't good. Yeah, the ring here isn't very good. Okay, I'm gonna save this. Because I don't really need to overcome it here. Because I win next turn with pile on and these two anyways. Like what, what do they do? Fable? Hmm, that actually kind of sucks. But it's not the end of the world. Uh, they're taking a lot of damage. They have to take the shield there, but if they do, then they can't get the shield right down. They're also taking two damage here. Um, should I play around Croxa? Probably should. An opponent is dead their own one ring. Yep. Okay, so, Invasion of Gobakin, the end. We don't need Thought Seizes. We don't. We also don't want uh, Pitting Needle. I think Gobakin and the end is uh, good enough. And... We're gonna go down on some shield hair. It can be a little bit clunky. And especially when they have like thought seasons and um, fatal pushes and whatnot. It can be a little bit bad. Same with Dawn.
come to think of it, we still haven't seen intangible virtue, right? They might actually take the end. I feel like they should. Taking out Legion's landing, like, whatever, it's not a big deal, yeah, there you go. They have to, otherwise they're just gonna lose. Without Shieldred, they, the deck, the whole deck can't function, that's why the end is so powerful. So, this is Orcish Bowmaster. We're just going to attack. Then we just uh, slowly take over the game with the uh, Legion's Endings and whatnot. I need a plane for our uh, Castle Ardenvale. Should I attack? I think we can. I couldn't block this one because if they flash in another Orcish Bowmaster, this is going to grow into a 2-2, right? They probably should have done it on... on that. Okay, that's a bit annoying. So we need to look for... Um, intangible Virtue. Right? Yeah, we need to look for intangible virtue. Funny thing is, this thing also shuts down their Orcish Bowmaster, so... Come on, Intangible Virtue. Where are you? Should I get rid of their 1-1? One, one? So we're actually not supposed to take up Holland's Shield Air because of that. Because of this card. I think we should probably get rid of that one instead. Just uh, sit for a bit. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at this. Hmm. 
I take five damage next turn if I don't play. I think we have to actually sit. Let them attack with the hive. Or let's just kill the goblin shaman, perhaps. No, we have to kill the hive. We have to kill the hive. Oh man, this is actually a bit of a problem here. Why do they want to do it on that? That actually simplified a lot. Of the Kikijiki now doesn't have anything to copy and we'll have bitter blossom or should i just bitter blossom now well retrofitter Is better than a bitter blossom here. We have to take additional three damage from the hive. So we need to get bullied just one more turn. Very close game. Interesting. I have to do this. Hmm. Another land. They're really pushing it with Hive, huh? Did I bring any Fatal Pushes? Looks like they have something here. This is fine. Another land. Oh, that's so bad. It's actually so bad. I'm actually gonna just die to Hive. Unfortunately. I mean, there's no way they have another removal spell in their, in their hand, right? There's no way, right? Something like that just can't happen. So the reason why I'm doing this instead of just blocking with two by making a 4-4 four four is because if they have a fatal push, then I don't have, um, I can't block this thing. Is 
There's no way, right? There is a way. There is a way. And there is a way to draw another land. Feels bad. Oh, man. Uh, we're still alive. Just barely. Just barely. Okay. Might have a chance. This cost two. Opponent's just relentless, right? Just playing Hive every single turn. I think we have to. Nice. I was thinking about saving it for Shaldred. Which would be like pretty bad. Um but yeah, we have to we have to end fast. Uh oh. Why did you surrender? You could have top decked the shouldered. Okay, so we played six games. We went five and one. Uh, the only loss was to Mono Green Devotion. The Mono Green Devotion matchup seems pretty impossible. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's actually pretty bad. Just because our deck isn't like super fast and the Orcish Bowmaster isn't really that great anymore versus the Mono Green Devotion just because like they don't play any one ones anymore. So this thing, useless. Um, and then we have we have like three copies of Thought Seasons and two copies of the end, but it's kind of about it. So like we're just not fast enough for their deck, but everything else like mid range deck is just free win. Combo decks we also have some very nice uh, cyborg cards to bring, such as uh, Stone of Eric, Unlicensed Hearse, the end. Like the end has been absolutely amazing. Exiling all the Agamoth at one time, Shaldred. This card is amazing. And Bitter Blossom. I keep saying, so every game, I'm just like, oh man, we have two mana, but it's kind of, it feels kind of slow. But if you can get it down, it's like, it's, it kind of takes over the game. And this is actually really nice because uh, previously in this, in this deck, we actually didn't have a black creature to activate the Convoke cost for the pile on. But the fact that the Bitter Blossom does that, um, generating black tokens. So along with these two, the pylon has become a lot better as a result. And um, in this deck, I've taken out every single Ornithopters in this deck and just using the Retrofitter Foundry as a means of generating tokens. And it's been okay. Just because like in the one drop slot, there's really not much going on in this deck against a grindy matchup like Rakdos midrange, Jun midrange, like Retrofitter has been pretty nice. And uh, two copies of right, two copies of right has been pretty amazing. And the last thing, last card that I kind of want to talk about is Poland Shield Air. I don't know what to make of this card. So the other alternative that you can play instead of that card is actually this card, Flowering of the White Tree. You want to play like three or four copies of this, but considering that this is a legendary, it's, it doesn't feel good. So that's the only other alternative. And this thing is not a legendary, so you can have multiple copies going at the same time, but it is vulnerable to removal spell, which can be good or bad at the same time because this is also a creature. So you're playing a creature instead of just playing a two mana do nothing. 
it's like especially turn two. The effect does stack, so that's also very good. And the sorcery part can win you the game. There was actually one time where it did win me the game. So definitely not a bad card at all. But you do also have to splash some green mana just so that you can proc this thing. We have seven copies of green sources. Like, so we're not like splashing too much just to cast the sorcery part. Like most of the times you're just going to play this as a creature. But if you can play the sorcery part, it's actually very, very good. But again, like with all the other adventure cards, like the opportunity cost of this being able to play the sorcery part or the creature part is just so low that like, why not? splash to have some green lands in the deck just to play this sometimes but it's not the end of the world if you can't play the sorcery portion either so because at the end of the day it's a two mana two two lord even if you can't play the sorcery part it's fine so yeah that was me investigating Poland shield air and bitter blossom in the deck i really like the fact that we can play loris in this deck by the way because if you can get the dawn of new age down and if it does go end up in, the, in your graveyard, then you can also play it again. So that's also nice. Um, same with some some of the creatures that we have here. Uh, Orcish Bowmaster and Poland Shield there. You can bring it back. So yeah, that's pretty nice. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video so far. And if you did, as always, leave a like, comment below, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.